Greetings hobbyists, this is Arthans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at a nice trick you can do using two curve modifiers. So in a previous video I had a look at what we could do by combining two subdivision modifiers, one on top of the other, and why that can be beneficial over just using one. And I want to show something similar today using two curve modifiers. So we're going to start this off by making a sort of highway section. So let's bring in a cube, let's scale that up a bit, that's S and then Y and make that pretty wide. This might not be wide enough, we'll play around with it. Let's control and R and then control and B to do our middle section. Let's just S and Y that in a bit. And then face mode, let's extrude that up. And then let's control and R and control and B and then face mode and then we'll extrude that up as well. Let's apply the scale and then we're just gonna Grab those, Control and B, and just add in a chamfer to be the middle road section. I don't think this is going to be far enough, so let's just G and then Y that further. Control and R, somewhere there. Extrude that up. Control and R. E and extrude that up, and that'll be the edge of our road. Yep, and then we'll Alt and X. That's using Mesh Machine to bring that over to the side and then let's A, S and then scale that on the x-axis just so it's a bit thicker. Something like that will be fine. And this is going to be our section of our raised highway. In fact, I still don't think that's wide enough. Let's G and then Y that out a bit further and symmetrize that across to the side. And then we want to get rid of these faces because they're going to be connected together. So I'm going to select that face, Shift and G, select by normal, delete those faces. And then I'll do the same thing here, Shift and G, select those by normals, delete, and then those faces. So that when we array this, in fact, let's just do that now, add an array, we can just up this amount and we'll have our highway. Uh, I'm gonna fix my view because it seems to be going really tiny. So let's just add in a couple of zeros there and then we can extend our road a little bit further. There we go, so we've got a really long road. In fact, let's just scale this whole thing down. Because at the moment, it's getting a bit of a pain to see. There we go. Uh, just to make this a little bit clearer as a road, I don't normally fiddle around with materials, but we'll do that really quickly here. So let's add a new material. We're not gonna bother with anything bar the viewport, so I'm just gonna go to viewport display and we'll make that a relatively light color. And then we'll add another material so let's plus that new, we'll call this tarmac. And then let's change that viewport color to something darker. There, and then go into face mode, select the two faces that are gonna be the tarmac, click on tarmac, click assign, and then we've got our darker tarmac, and I'm gonna change the mat cap to be a sort of more plain gray color so we can sort of see the idea of what we want. And let's just make this material a little bit more concretely colored. Anyway, so we get the idea. We've got a road, and it's a pretty long road. And this is going to be a raised highway going over some sort of obstacle. And what we want to do is we want to add some interesting shape to this. So what I'm going to do is use a Bezier curve, and then use a curve modifier. So let's go into a Bezier curve. Let's select that there. Let's go into X-ray mode, and then we can play around with this. So I'm just going to rotate that around to somewhere relatively flat. And then let's G that there. Let's scale these up so we've got a bit more of a twisting shape, something like that. So we'll just manipulate the shape until we get something that we want. And then we'll click on our object. And then we're just going to add a modifier. And I'm going to add a curve modifier. I've got an add-on that makes it look like the old method. You could just use your normal add modifier to get a curve here. And then I'm going to click on this and we've got our road, and it is following our curve. Cool. Now, what we'd normally do is, if I want this to have some height on it, what we'd need to do is come into the curve itself, and then we can start selecting points and moving them around. But you'll notice it starts twisting the road, which is not great. And I don't like that. It's definitely not the overall effect I want. And also, I need to start looking at this in two planes, to try and get this working. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of that. I'm gonna have one plane that is just, or one curve, that is just dealing with the road 
from the top down, so in the XY plane, and then I'm gonna have another one that we're gonna look at in the Z axis to try and control the height. So let's straight away click on that, that's F2 for our Bezier curve, and call this horizontal. And then I'm gonna shift and A, mesh, and bring in another Bezier curve, and we'll F2, and we're gonna rename this vertical. So exactly the same procedure, now this time, if we notice from above, because we've got this angle to it, we want to sort that, so let's just press S, and then this is in the Y axis, and then zero, so it's perfectly straight, and then I'm going to start changing things around. So let's G that over here, that's just S to get that relatively flat, and then curving upwards to add the height of our road, and then we'll E to extrude that out, I'm just going to scale that up a little bit to make it a bit smoother. And then we'll scale this one out a bit smoother as well. If we want to, we could just G, B, and then grab that Z, and then make sure it's exactly the right height, if that's what we want. And then just G, and then X that across. And let's just say I want my bridge to start descending here, and it's going to descend further. So we'll E that to there and then S, and we've got it actually going to a lower point. Actually, that might need scaling up some more. There we go. I think we'll scale that one up a little bit more as well, and then just G, and then X that across. Actually, maybe let's just select both of these and have them a bit higher, just so we've got something interesting. Now, this is a little bit extreme for a bridge in terms of what it normally goes up and down, though having said that, being across some bridges in the UK, this seems pretty standard. But anyway, what we can do now is click on our road, and we're just going to add in another curve modifier. And this time, we're going to select our horizontal one. There we go. So now, we have our bridge that works. Let's just end to get rid of the end panel. One that's controlling our curve this way, and one that's controlling our bridge height. So we have that there. You can see the curve there. And then we have another one here with the curve controlling it there. And there's the curve in the middle. Now, the secret of this, and there are a few secrets, is firstly, you need to make sure that everything has got the same origin, and that is a really important point. So all of my origins are exactly at the same point. That is very, very key to making this work. And then if you really want to, we can change things. So let's come into top view, and we can select this curve here, go into edit mode, and I could maybe Make that even more extreme, or something like that. And then let's extend our road a little bit further by upping our array to something like that. So you can see how useful this is to have control in just one axis. It stops this twisting. You'll notice the bridge is perfectly flat in terms of it not having twisted around like we saw earlier. And it just gives a really nice, easy to control effect. Now you will notice this is a little bit faceted. It's got a bit of a ugly curving, and that is only because each curve has not very much resolution. So I could up that to 64, and it's gonna get much more curved, and then up that one to let's say 64 as well. Now this, again, is another great benefit. We could have one resolution in one direction and another in another direction. So for example, if I want this height one to actually be quite extreme and not curved, I down this to maybe like three, and it's gonna look really, really broken up into sections, which if you've got your highway made in sections, maybe that's the way it should be. So it's lots of different groups. So again, it gives you an element of control beyond what you'd get if you only have one curve modifier. Now what's cool about this is you do not just have to use this for things like bridges. I've used this for things like tentacles in the past where you've got one horizontal and one vertical in a similar style to control the movement of your tentacles, which is really useful if you've got to avoid certain other objects or if you want it curving around certain objects as you can comfortably control one axis at a time with each of the curves. So hopefully that's a useful trick that you might be able to employ in some of your modeling. If you found that tip useful, please do hit the like button. It helps share the video around and makes YouTube more likely to show it to other people if they're looking for similar tricks. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. And if you want to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon page where you get these videos a week ahead of time, ad-free, and other great tips as well. Have a great day, guys.